Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're gassing up our bikes. We're taking a little bit of a trip on down to the spoiler season of Wheels of Vengeance, as well as talking a little bit about some Hero Clicks tournament news. This is episode 487. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. It's over, Simeon. I have the high ground. Instant dead and over oh, yeah. six oh, people smart. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Absolute fools. Cool. Simeon will be able to edit that out, I'm sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your place like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you in part by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, for 5% off Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy directly from the source, maple syrup straight from the tree, you can go to shop.wizkids.com and use code DIAL H10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. Not valid on certain figures like white shirt Scott Porter, black shirt Scott Porter, or pre-orders and iconics. Joining me like always in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just a yeah? Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and start off with what made us happy this week. My man, what uh, made you happy? Oh, this week, what made me happy was, well... Certainly wasn't work. That was mm. miserable at best. As uh, a little chilly out there now, starting to get a little chilly. It is. For, uh, I normally take a few uh, weeks to slowly adjust, like body wise. Um, eventually, mm. I get to the point where I'm like, ah, oh, it's not so bad. Uh, I'm having to do that quite a bit faster. So it's like t-shirts in the morning, so that like my body just I just sit there and shiver. But it's gonna, it's necessary. Because if I don't do it now, mm. then by the time the mornings are like 20 degrees, I'm going to have to be like, you know, seven layer deep fried burrito kind of suited up. <laughs> seven layers is just a bit too much for, for work. But it's definitely not uh, the weather or work that's made me happy this last week. But I did go thrifting and I found some pretty mm. cool little books, found some interesting stuff. I actually found a book where the I don't know when it was written but it's like a breakdown of the science behind X-Files, and it's like, could this actually happen? And I've only just started reading it, but spoiler alert, most of the answers are no. So it's like, could a man uh. control fungus to make people turn into, like, mushrooms? And it's like, no, that's not really possible. But if we ignore all of this biology stuff that would get in the way, kind of possible. And it's like, oh, so still oh, that's no. kind of fun. But, like, if we yeah. ignore the majority of the science, then kind of, yeah. So. But at least it's not just like, did this happen? Nah. And then doesn't <laughs> yeah. explain anything. Right. It's kind of like, cool that know, it goes into it a bit. We'll, uh, we'll uh, set aside most of the science that we have to, to pretend like this could be possible and take a look at it in that frame of reference. Still no, but, uh, I mean, it's closer. I only just started reading it, but, I yeah. I found that book to be hilarious, just like the fact that it exists. Um, also, there's a huge disclaimer on the front cover about how they don't have any uh, property rights or like the IP to X Files. Any mention of X Files is like knowing that it's part of Warner Brothers or whatever. So I found that funny too. Oh, that's kind of fun. Kind of have to, I guess. Right? Save your save your butt there. Well, right on. What made me happy this week? Pretty simple. It's two things. One, the Team Fortress 2 year of Scream Fortress has started, and I have been grinding out some late nights of just playing TF2 with some friends and just getting Halloween contracts. They added, this was a straight shot of nostalgia right to my brain. Uh, they added the zombie game mode as an official game mode. It used to be like a big community server thing, and I loved it. I would like that'd be the only way I'd play TF2 for months and months and months on end. Very early in my like playing the game years and years ago, and now to finally have official zombie mode is so sick. And the maps are so fun. And it's loose. It was like bro. It was straight up broken. The zombies were way too weak, like for a few days. But they fixed it, and now it's like so dope. Literally so much fun. So. 
big big ups there. And then the second thing that made me happy was you recommended we go or I go to Broncos, and I finally did go to Broncos, and it was really good. I really yeah. really enjoyed it. Yeah, I really liked it. On a scale I will of say one to steak and shake. Ooh. Where's it at? Uh, you know, I actually I would say I'm gonna put it above Don and Millie's, and I really really enjoyed their fries. I feel like. I chose a wrong burger when I went there, but on a scale of one to steak and shake, these guys are like, they're like an 8.59. They're like really, really close. If not, I would say almost probably a nine because they, their biggest thing was I was scared when I saw their ice cream machine and I was like, oh man, (laughs) did they just, did they just dump chocolate ice cream in a cup and then just give me that as a quote unquote shake? And I was like, I was getting ready to like cry and be so mad. Uh, but it was like, no, this is this is chocolate syrup mixed with vanilla ice cream, and it's smooth, baby, and it's good. Um, their fries were awesome. Honestly, I like their fries more than steak and shake fries. Uh, yeah, so maybe okay. on that part, they're like they're like nine, probably nine to nine point five. Honestly, the shake is they don't have the specialty shakes, but I think for making a standard chocolate shake, knock it out of the park, just great. Love the fries. I think I made a mistake on the burger. Um, the pony burger was described as a beefier burger, and it w- was not. It was not. Um, I was assuming beefier meant like thicker. Uh, it was not very thick. I'm like, ah, well, uh, pony didn't sound like it'd be a big burger, a pony burger. Um, but when you describe it as a beefier burger, I thought it, it's still a really good burger. But I feel like I need to go back and get like a like a cheese like double cheeseburger or something to really get the like the full vibe. But I really enjoyed it. I was like. You walk into a place like that, and you're like, oh, this is classic. I love the atmosphere. I love the the small-town burger joint type feel of it. Obviously, the Broncos burger, the sign rocks. So, yeah, it's high up there for me. It's You know, I'd, I'd put it at a steady nine, honestly, because the fries were so dope. Burger was great. Shake was great. I super enjoyed the experience. It was awesome. Yeah. It took me I think there, quite a few yeah. years to actually try it out. Like, people had mentioned it, and I've driven past it so many times. And finally, I was like, uh, I was driving with one of my friends and looking for some place to eat. And I was like, well, there's Broncos. And he's like, yeah, we could do Broncos. I'm okay with that. And I was like, I've never actually had Broncos. Is it good? And he's like, you've never had Broncos? <laughs> like, yeah, then we're, we're getting Broncos. And I got some triple patty something or other. And I was like, this is way too much food to like pound in like a, you know, 10 minute car drive. But I did it. And uh, it wasn't like I like my burgers more like uh, bar style where they're thicker and I don't know. (laughs) I don't know how to explain that, but I don't really like the smash patty style. But as far as that style goes, uh, even like the onions and stuff that were on the burger, it was pretty good. And yeah, the fries were definitely like the standout to me. It's like these fries are actually good fries, which most places I don't care for fries, but yeah. I agree, dude. The fries knocked out of the park. Burger, solid. And yeah, I just, I really had a great time. I was like, I was mad. I was like, I can't believe I hadn't been here sooner. I'd like seen it exactly the same thing like you. It's like, I drove past it a bunch of times. And uh, yeah, now it's going to be probably a standout. Uh, I would say it's winning the Omaha Shake contest uh, rankings for me right now. I would wow. say their chocolate shake is is top if we're if we're yeah. considering omaha exclusive and we're discounting like saying culver's is not allowed to compete then i would say they're winning the chocolate shake right now sadly it's high praise. where did i that, yeah it really really is and I, I guess dave's hot chicken is also a chain but i would it's, i've only seen it in omaha so that's like second i have you been to the king kong place oh uh not in like a long time but they used to oh have... okay King Kong used to at one point. I don't know if they still did, uh, still do. They used to have like as a drive-through have um, prime rib as like a, a menu option, and it was like it'd be like you know twenty-five bucks or whatever. But I, I yeah. remember going through it probably like ten years ago, and I was like, prime rib, like that's not a fast food option, that's right? Like a, <laughs> I sit down at a table and eat this kind of option. Uh, but I mean, I guess yeah, they do they do catering and whatever else too. But yeah, I haven't had their stuff in a while. Uh, I remember their euros being real good though. So that was like that's like their main thing, right? Their big selling point was like their euros. Um, me and my little bro went like a few weeks ago, and I just like you saw that they had like a steak. They didn't have a prime rib on the menu, but they had like a ribeye on the menu. 
and it was like special ribeye Sunday special like fifteen dollars and I'm like I think I ordered I'm just like look at my little brother and I'm like I think I order a steak from this fast food restaurant I'm really curious what it's gonna be and it was like really good they had like a plate of like rice and all this other stuff and then like okay the steak was solid and then he got just like a burger which was also they also had solid fries at uh, at King Kong Burger it was, like, it was really good and then but I will say their shake is really really low on the list. Because their chocolate shake was like a mocha. It was like Ooh. so weird. It was served like a mocha pretty much. And it very much tasted that way. And I was like, mm, no, this isn't a chocolate shake. I'm sorry. Uh, and it was very light, a little too light and fluffy where it almost felt like it was a lot of whipped, a lot of whipped cream in there. So they, they were good food. I enjoyed the steak I had from the fast food restaurant. But uh, the shake is low. But anyways, that's that's enough food talk. Hopefully listener you were i've already ate breakfast and aren't waiting for lunch or dinner or something when you're listening to this and if you are well hopefully something good's coming your way um oh man one more side tangent on food actually before we go the chick-fil-a has a pimento chicken sandwich it's really good it's a hot pepper honey pimento chicken sandwich at chick-fil-a and i just got it because i was like oh pimento sandwich that's what mike ermentrout eats in breaking bad that's funny but it was it was like actually really good (laughs) so yeah side tangent for another fun yeah so anyways i was gonna say uh, we got some really also the ghost whoppers back if you want the oh. quote unquote ghost pepper oh. whopper, I had it last year. It's mostly just a red bun. It's like oh, a concerning okay. color of red bun. It's not like a deep, Ooh. like baked red or like, you know, they used a different type. No, it's just like a dyed red, bright red bun. Um, I tried it last year. It wasn't like anything to make big mention of as I am doing, but it is back. So, okay. There's also. The food tangent is so real. The curd burger is back. Ian mentioned that last week. Haven't been able to go get the curd burger yet. But it's on. I might convince him tonight we go get curd burgers. I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of scared to make myself hungry. Yeah. Um, But also, for those slightly more Heroclix related, Krispy Kreme has Scooby-Doo donuts. Oh, yeah. Whatever that means right now for Halloween season. So I want to make... Some dumb Heroclix content with the Krispy Kreme donuts. But if you're a Heroclix player and you love Scooby-Doo and, you know, there's there's layers of relation there, go to Krispy Kreme. Get yourself some Krispy Kreme Scooby-Doo donuts. The specialty donuts are a little more spendy, though. I will, will fairly warn everybody. If you're used to getting the dozen for, like, 10-ish, $15. The special donuts, like, 3-ish, 4 bucks a piece. It's kind of kind of spendy for the specialty ones. But all right, that is... I never want to say it's enough food talk, but I suppose we have to move on, even though food talk is just the best. Let's jump into some quick news here. Uh, Let's go over, let's just go over a few announcements really quick before we get into all the awesome Wheels of Vengeance dials we're seeing in the spoiler season here really quickly. So I just want to officially announce on the show, the Champion Clicks Open in Florida We are going to be there. The Dial H crew is going to be there providing media coverage. This is really cool. It's a great opportunity. I'm very happy that we get to do this. We love providing the world's coverage and letting everybody know at home what's going on in a tournament. Um, This is another, like, bigger Heroclix tournament. Like, not like official big, like, WizKids Heroclix tournament, but it's still a really solid community-run tournament. I enjoyed my time last year just as a player going there, hanging out. And even, like, skipping modern, just, like, jam BRs all day is, like, a ton of fun. Um, So, yeah, we're going to be in Florida. So if you are planning to be in Florida, Simeon, Ian, and I are all going to be down there having a good time, getting interviews with people, live streaming some games. It'll be a blast. We hope to see you all there. I want to say there are hotel thing and if like you're like oh wow dial is going to be there now i want to go uh definitely go check their hotel on their facebook because i want to say they just opened up like they sold out but then they opened up like eight more slots or rooms or whatever so it might be really tight you'll want to get a room at the hotel if you can but if you can't uh it's still it's still possible it just will be uh, like a drive every day right and uh yeah it definitely is so just so you guys know, we are very excited to be down there in the Florida Clicks Champion Clicks Open, and yeah, providing coverage for everybody. It's also cool because, like everybody I was talking with, 
Um, he was like, I really want you guys to at least play one event. So we won't be providing as much coverage for teams because they do want us to play in teams. We'll see if that still shakes out and that we play in teams. I hope if it's like Wheels of Vengeance teams, that does sound like a lot of fun. Or if for some reason pre-release is already happening for like Disney Plus 2 and they can somehow get that for teams, that would also be cool. I doubt it. But uh, it'd be cool. But Wheels of Vengeance teams, like a full brick of wheels, sounds like a blast sealed event to play. So I would be really looking forward to that. But yeah, guys, be on the lookout for us at the Florida Clicks event. So yeah. once again, we love doing Jay's coverage for events. And you can see us there. The, the chess clock game. like tournament, Oh, that's right. That side tournament. And I'm heavily invested in what the outcome is going to be. There's a lot of detractors um, that think it'll, it won't work. There's a lot of people that like myself think that it's going to be interesting and may work uh so yeah i'm I'm excited to tell everyone at home whether or not you should invest in a chess clock right now or not some people already have so they're already headed the game i would love to see it translate into hero clicks and how those game goes those are probably the games i would be most looking forward of recording that weekend to just see what the community thinks of seeing the chess clock because i think that's those are probably the games that should have some eyes on them the most because that's like the new hot, like crazy cool thing. Yeah. Plus, there was that Netflix series, which is a like a girl's like a hero clicks prodigy. And oh yeah. She practices like the strategy, and they use chess clocks in that one. It was like uh, right. uh, the hero clicks gambit. No, it was a uh, Ro- yeah, like Rogan, Rogan gambit. gambit. Yeah. Yeah, that's Rogan was, gambit. Yeah. Like the Netflix show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good with uh. Anna de Armas or whatever she her name is. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. That person. <laughs> Just getting it so wrong. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, guys, be tuned there. And also, speaking of HeroClix tournaments, it's already well underway on its way. But the Bradcast, I, I forgot what Brad is calling this tournament, super farewell to online play, big old crazy wilds t- elimination tournament. Uh, is happening right now. If you want to, you always spectate some games. If you're in the Bradcast Show HeroClix Discord, you can join the game rooms. They allow spectators. You just they'll always have a link to like the Roll Twenty room if you want to check it out. We may stream some. I know Ian was interested in trying to stream some of them. So maybe if there is the free time to do that, we could do that. I no promises made, but it's a pretty cool tournament where. Basically, anything that wins that's on a winning build is then banned next round. So the meta is going to change. It's very similar to the online. I don't know if it was called the Kilted Classic when PJ did that online. Maybe it was. Sets, not sets of people. I um, yeah, what was that? Was I feel it like it was called Kilted, Kilted Classic, Classic, maybe? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. that might have been it. We participated in that one like two years ago now. Um, yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, I really like the format because you have to, if there's something that you really want to play or you think is really good, you have to kind of meta guess, is anyone going to win with this this round? It's like when we did it, I remember thinking Dolphin from Rebirth was like a figure I was going to play. And then it got played round two and people were like, yeah, you're surprised that it was like that it didn't uh, make it past round two. And I was like, I am because I thought everyone was sleeping on it. I was like, I didn't think anyone else realize like how just like cheap that figure was for a lot of utility uh but yeah that was like something where i was like dang what am i gonna play for round two now or i guess round three. Oh right yeah because they played it in round two yeah so that's i'm more interested in that than like the actual games just seeing what like gets uh banned each round i think that's in oh fun. for sure i think it's so so cool Let's see, what, is this like, ban list already happening? Ooh, round one list showing everything which is legal includes I can't blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, anything that was previewed is also legal for this tournament, which is just wild. Yeah. So, like, the three Guardians of the Galaxy holiday figures we showed off, the Marvel starter, Wheels of Vengeance, the, uh, some of that stuff. The, the one, from... The one yeah. figure, yeah, from Next Phase. That's so funny. Uh, yeah, it's just... It's hilarious. Like, all that is also legal. It's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. 
So yeah, October 15th, so tomorrow, or whenever you guys are listening to this, might probably in the past, more than likely, uh, is the end of round one, and round two is October 16th through the 22nd, so you get a week to play all these games, so it should end, looks like, December 18th through the 31st. Wow, uh, that's going to be a tough week to get some games in, I feel like, but I'm sure they can manage. Very nice. So yeah, it's going to be a long run in tournament, so we'll see. We'll see where it shakes out, and we'll... I don't know. I think we could probably update everybody week by week. This is now don't take this as gospel here. I'm just saying maybe uh, with the ban list, see what was banned, see what's legal. Um, I don't know if this will continue, but we can, you know, do a little, uh, ooh, who could it be? You know, what will the meta be this next round now that we know that this stuff is banned, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But it's a fun tournament. It's really cool. So, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. Anyways, let's jump into some howling good hero clicks previews. I'll just jump right into Cap Wolf here. He's pretty cool. I, I'm not gonna lie. He's not what I would think a Cap Wolf would do. And I need to see whatever storyline this one is based off of, because the original Man and Wolf, he very much does not ride a motorcycle. Um, he does make a werewolf army eventually. Like he like gets all the other people that are turned into werewolves to go against. Oh gosh, Nightshade. Yeah, Nightshade. Um, to battle her and his like team is like him, Brother Voodoo, Cable, and like Wolf Spain, and then Wolf, even more Wolfified version of Wolverine. Um, this one looks like it's from something else because he Cap Wolf never rides a motorcycle in the original Man and Wolf storyline for the Mark Greenwald run. So I don't know what this is necessarily based off of because like definitely the latter half of the dial screams more werewolf cap to me than those first two. The first two clicks very much feel like just Captain America throwing his shield and throwing it like really well to be a 12 for four precision strike um, like really well. So Cap Wolf has Avengers and Mystics. So very much could be a 13 for four top dial. He has seven clicks of life. Not that that honestly kind of feels like it matters. He has Animals, Avengers, Howling Commandos, Monster, Mystical, Past, Shield, Soldier, and Vehicle Keywords. That's a lot. Improved Movement, Elevated Characters. That's good. Improved Targeting, Elevated. That's really good. Uh, he does only have four range. Keep that in mind. It feels like I think that him... Prime Cap and Pegasus Cap. Let's check. Yep. All have four range. That might be Cap's new range, I guess. Kind of looking like that's his new kind of standard. He has four special abilities, including three traits. So it's a lot to get into. So let's just get into it. Pilot ability wolf on two wheels. It's basically the pilot mechanic. When revealing your force, you may choose a single base character on your sideline that is named Captain America or has the monster keyword and turn it to any click. This is insane that he just allows the monster keyword, by the way, guys. And we'll get into why that is insane here in a bit. Cap Wolf can use the standard attack and damage powers displayed on that character's dial on any click, right? Okay. When Cap Wolf is KO'd, before removing him from the map, generate the chosen character from your sideline on its last non-KO click. This game, that character can't be healed or replaced and isn't scored when it is KO'd. And then this trait has protected pulse wave. So he gets to put a monster or a person in Captain America on the sideline. They are the pilot of Cap Wolf or I guess of the motorcycle. So it'd make the most sense of course, do a werewolf or a Captain America. So that way when the bike is destroyed, this figure being the bike or him on the bike, then him on his last click comes out. It's a fun way to do the old pilot mechanic ability. Anyways, it's insane because choosing any monster or any cap and turning them to then any click, there's just a lot of stuff. We'll get into that later. Second trait, my howling commandos. At the beginning of the game, generate up to three Wheels of Vengeance 04 werewolves on their red starting line. That's insane. And just quick reminder for what the Wheels of Vengeance Werewolf does. Thankfully, not as great on its red starting line, its lower point line. Otherwise, it's a charge blades piece of Battle Fury. This is now only a sidestep combat reflexes, uh, 6, 10, 17, 2 with Battle Fury. But it can still, on a 5 through 6 for Harvest or Blood Moon, get plus 1 attack and flurry. So it can be a sidestep 11 attack flurry blades Battle Fury piece. Kind of good. He just brings in three of them for free. So that is 45 points of characters for 90 points that Cap Wolf just brings, albeit they're two clicks and they can die easily, which is balanced. 
Uh, yeah. But he just gets those. The hard uh, three sidesteppers right away. It's at the beginning of the game. And yeah, like luckily they have sidestep on that click because they have Battle Fury. So actually carrying them or moving up with them yeah. might be an issue. But yeah, they, they can just sidestep. Huh. And they don't mm. have to at that point, I don't think, be like a main priority for your team. They're just a secondary thing that you have going on. Right. And don't worry if that if you thought that trait was already really solid, it's slash slash. He just has leadership. Makes sense. He is Captain America. When Cap Wolf uses it and succeeds, after resolutions, he may generate a werewolf on either starting line. This is really cool. I don't think we've seen besides like Sentinels and like Master Mold, someone that can just choose a starting line for the generic they bring in to start on. So if it's better for the werewolf to be a charge piece, you need that extra two square reach, which is really ultimately all charge is giving you, um, or just have more life, then you can do that. Or if you're super, super close in and they're, you, they don't need to charge, then might as well just let them have combat reflexes. That might give them actually more survivability, which is really cool. So that is neat. Uh, also, leadership is also at the beginning of your turn, so you can roll for Harvest and Blood Moon after you bring them in, after leadership. So that's really cool. Uh, then that's the second trait. Third trait, he has Moon, Bark at the Moon. At the beginning of your turn, roll a d6. For all the friendly characters, the Moon trait, Cap Wolf can use the resulting effect until your next turn. So 1 through 4 is the shame. same, it's shape change. 5 through 6 is way better than Flurry. It is free, so this turn he has free generate the character chosen for cap wolf's pilot trait on its last non ko click and that character makes an attack after resolutions return it to your sideline on any click so you just get to pop out the pilot they get to attack and they instantly go back and so it's not close it's not range so you can't like activate certain powers with that but it is still just make an attack which is really good and then he has defense power which is esd invulnerability super senses for his first five clicks Running shot, prison strike, first two, and then it's all charge for the last five with Battle Fury. And then on his last two clicks, he gets some steel energy and regen. Cap Wolf is really, really, really solid. He's kinda kinda nutty for a chase. And if you were on like Facebook or AC Realms and you've been seeing the legacy card, Avenger 60 033 Hulk being traded like crazy, it's kind of because of Cap Wolf, and I'll just explain really quickly why. So the whole pop out on their last click. This Hulk is a 12 attack, 6 damage, precision strike, shape change, 19 defense, invincible on that last click. He is also a charge flurry plasticity, uh, special speed power on that last click. So when the pilot dies, you turn him to the last click. This Hulk is a 6 square reach, charge flurry plasticity, 12 attack, 6 damage piece, which is insane. Also, he's a giant, so an extra 2 square reach, actually, um, with willpower. And Avengers, so his stuff just works for the beginning of the game. Okay. But usually it's like, okay, well, then I'll just kill him, deal him one damage, and then he dies. Except this Hulk also has once per game when he's KO'd, you turn him to click 11. What's on click 11? A really good damage power if you want to give this to Cap Wolf while he's riding the bike. So turn this to any click. Remember that? You can use the attack and damage. There's no attack on click 11, but the damage power is outwit, perplex, prob, standard damage symbol, safeguard, outwit. Uh, really good to just give someone outwit perplex prob. That's really cool. So this is the Bruce Banner click. He also has a defense power. When Hulk would take damage, turn him to click four. <laughs> Protected pulse wave. Uh, kind of good since the damage power also has safeguard outwit, which keeps that entire click being safeguard. So you cap wolf dies. You do score 90 points. You turn this guy to click seven. He dies. Turn him to click 11. You finally deal him damage to get him off click 11. Then he goes to click four. And then you, then after that point, then you can finally kill him if you deal him enough damage uh, to get to click eight, which is his first KO click. Um, and the reason he can move all around his dial is it's not healing. It's just turning the dial. So it's totally, totally valid. So that's just the standout pilot that people instantly were like, oh, this is a great pilot. He's awesome because he has the monster keyword. So it's really cool. Cap Wolf, uh, I think the monster keyword a pilot ability can lead to some pretty crazy shenanigans especially in like silver age to golden age which is really wild and i think that's what makes cap like the best especially with that free just pop out your pilot like move 10 squares free drop the pilot makes an attack 12 for 6 yeah that's kind of insane like really good so that's cap wolf kind of kind of nutty and also 
hopefully you guys got to see, but I totally glossed over this when I first started back on, is that we got a preview, Cap Wolf. Uh, Dial H got to, so that was a short that we made. I, should, I say we, that Ian made. Uh, he did mo- like 99% of the work besides my one little bit. And then, yeah, he knocked it out of the park. It was really cool. It was hilarious. Flying eagle American flag, doing wheelies and... Well, Sculpt is always doing a wheelie, but uh, going up ramps and flipping around. Very, very cool. Very extreme for the Wheels of Vengeance vibe of the set. So, again, thank you, WizKids, for letting us be able to preview this figure. I was excited to preview him, especially. I was like, wow, he is insane. Holy smokes. So, it's pretty sweet. So, again, thank you guys so much. And I hope you, the listeners and supporters of Dial H, enjoyed that exclusive preview because we enjoyed giving it to you. Um, But, yeah. Simeon, if you and I have seen a handful, but I definitely think that Cap Wolf's going to be one of the most standout chases in this set. Uh, plus, it's just a really cool sculpt. It's an awesome looking sculpt. Uh, next oh, up, so sick, so sick. So, and he's big. Yeah, weird how big he is. He's like got massive shoulders. Um, yeah, we have another rider, but uh, he does not have the like vehicle pilot trait thing doesn't even have the vehicle keyword, so Namor was the next to be previewed on WizKids Heroclix. Uh, this might be my favorite sculpt. It's it's definitely in, like, my top five favorite sculpts of all time. Like It's awesome. Namor just riding a shark as it's lunging out of the water. It's really cool. Uh, the water effect. They've done some really cool Namor sculpts in the past, but this one's definitely my favorite Namor sculpt, and then it's got to be up there for coolest stuff I've ever seen. Uh, but anyhow, Namor has Avengers and Defenders team abilities. He's 053 in the set. He's got Atlantis, Avengers, Defenders, Illuminati, Animal, Future, Ruler, and Warrior keywords. So he's not a vehicle. He does not have that vehicle thing, which kind of makes sense because only he could really pilot a shark, quote-unquote pilot a shark. But uh, he has a single trait, and that is Chomp, Flurry. Flurry is free, but only to target characters occupying water terrain. So... Yeah, obviously you're going to want to play this guy in water terrain, but you don't necessarily have to win map to do that because his special speed power top dial is called Raging Waters. That is, gives him hypersonic speed, and then on top of that, when he moves after resolutions, he may generate a water terrain marker in a square he moved through. Since you move through, you're considered to have moved through the square that you end your movement in, uh, you can choose that square to be the water terrain, which wouldn't be bad because he's got dolphin symbol so you're also just you know giving yourself that protection from four squares away but then you get to uh, make your hypersonic attack and then flurry as free if you uh, move through like the opposing character too so that's another option he ignores characters so you could hypersonic up move through them move back make your uh, hypersonic attack and then flurry as free because they're now in water terrain so even if you don't win map, he's got the ability to do that top dial. Um, his top dial is 145 points. He has that speed power for the first three clicks, along with 12 attack, super strength. He's got 19 invincible on click one with four damage battle fury. And he goes down to three damage. He has battle fury his whole dial. Uh, his 80 point line starts on click four and goes to click nine. So actually have six clicks of life for 80 points which is pretty solid and he has two stop clicks but surprisingly not on his last click at all so he has it gets it on click three that is stop impervious and then if he's occupying water terrain he can reduce pen damage which best way to have impervious is reducing pen damage and then Mm -hmm. he also has that on click seven so if you're playing him at 80 points that's four clicks in on the 80 point line Uh, But yeah, he just goes from that hypersonic to charge. He has charge super strength. For some reason, he gets like real slow on click four, and then he goes back to eight speed. Yeah. His whole dial is eight speed, except for his 80-point starting line, click four, which maybe that's just like a game balance thing. They just didn't want him to have eight speed on that. But yeah, he's an 11 for three, still got Battle Fury. He's got an invulnerable. Um, I really like him. I think he's a really fun piece. I think he's going to absolutely massacre Sealed. Uh, maybe there will be something oh, that's better than absolutely. him and Sealed, but I think getting getting like three attacks off probably every turn, potentially more with him, is pretty nuts. But yeah, he's a pretty fun figure and definitely my favorite sculpt out of the set, which is, it's a tough 
tough vote because there's a lot of really good sculpts in this set. But I'm just a sucker for giant, gross white sharks. Great white sharks. He's so sick looking. Yeah. Yeah. They're weird. No, I agree, though. Like, last week I said it, I was like, this like might just be some of the best sculpts all year. This set is just phenomenal sculpts left and right. Like, so good. And then, yeah, this Namor's dope. I like the idea in Sealed that he hypersonics his full, like, speed, hits you for four, then flurries you. So he's like, hits you for 12 damage with <laughs> the 12 attack yeah. just right away. It's kind of gnarly. Well, uh, I like that, to... the 145, honestly. He'd have to move through. I mean, it depends on the sealed set. I doubt there's going to be a water move, right. but maybe. Um, it's not very Ghost Rider-y of them to have like a water map, but there may just be one that has some on it. Uh, but you could put the uh, water marker under the person that you're not attacking with hypersonic, hit the person, and then flurry on the person that you put the water on for free. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of options. Plus, uh, for all the stats, obviously, Avengers, he's probably going to have like a plus one attack. Not always, but good amount of the time. He'll have a plus one attack. Um, so 13 top dial is pretty solid. Invincible, because there's a lot of mystics in this set that we've seen. Defenders yeah, that probably nice. doesn't come up nearly as often, but for what it's worth, if there's other characters with that team ability, he has a 19 invincible top dial, so sharing a 19 is not nothing. It's just, I hardly ever see that team ability. Yeah, we don't... Ugh, does anyone get it earlier this year? Maybe a few... Moon Knight might get it in this set. I can't remember. I can't remember if he got it or not. You know, like he was a defender. The A60 Strange has it. I think. No, he wasn't a defender. Oh, was he? Yeah. A60 Strange. That sounds right. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Namor's a defender. Give it to him. I'm all for it. Even if it's not going to be used a bunch, it's it's still comic accurate to the characters. So that's a little nice. Yeah. Next up, old ghost surfer love loving the burn the sky trait uh he's got a lot to go into this is that massive robbie reyes surfing the the flame the hellfire wave it's so sick let's get into it we saw that he had a 200 140 point line earlier this year he has avengers cosmic monster mystical vehicle the surfboard being his vehicle um mystics cosmic energy well it has to be because that's I guess how Ghost Rider rules works. It has to be a vehicle, and so the surfboard counts, which is funny. Uh, let's get into it. So, two traits. First one, burn the sky. When Ghost Rider moves after resolutions, generate up to four fire smoke terrain markers in any squares that he moved through, and then make a close attack targeting an opposing character that he hasn't attacked yet this turn that is occupying any fire terrain marker regardless of adjacency. And it is still a close attack, just so you know. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, deal one damage to each character occupying those markers and then remove them. That is really, really, really good because he can do that for 40 points. And that is just when he is moved. Kind of gnarly. He also ignores characters and destroys blocking when he moves through it. So that's not slowing him down. Um, and he actually has his highest speed value technically on his 40 point line because it's a nine square speed with sidestep. Very, very nice. Plus, cool. Very on cool, that Robert. Line, he can make six fire smoke terrain markers. Because oh yeah, because it'd be yeah, side steps and move two, finished. And then yeah, nine speed move. So it's definitely like a a move nine, do that. Move two again, do it again. Uh, yeah. Make an attack. So that's like two. It's yeah, he's nuts. Two free attacks. Second straight. Yeah, dude. Two free attacks with again nine square reach first one, eleven square reach second one doesn't have to be adjacent for these attacks so good Ugh, ugh, so good second trait i see your sins noran rad which kind of mean first off noran rad took kind of an ultimate sacrifice for his like personal self to save his world but yeah he did also lead countless other worlds to their deaths so i would say maybe he's not the nicest dude but he made that sacrifice uh for his people and then for everyone else, not so much. So that's fair. When an opposing character within range uses willpower and succeeds, you after resolutions, you deal them one penetrating damage. Oh, it's so mean. Uh, and he has six squares uh, within range, and it's not line of fire, so it doesn't matter if it's blocked. Uh, you just deal him a pen for using willpower. So this is like anti-cosmic people, right? And kind of cool. Anti-retail people, because 
Oh well, yeah, all yikes! Of they, those guys have a colossal symbol. So if they're like, like old brimstone for some reason, they choose to roll Ooh, his willpower yeah. and he just deletes himself. I think that's definitely going to be a situation of a no. I'm good. Oh, you don't want to roll willpower? No, I'm fine. Sure, I'm fine. Might might be beneficial for you. Remove those action tokens. No, I'll just yeah. <laughs> like which that's I kind think of funny. That's what it'll anti, be is anti willpower tech. You know. If anything, it'll be used as more of like a deterrent where it's like, well, I just can't roll willpower because I don't want to take damage. Or it'll be a situation where so. you're like, well, if I succeed this, I get to do something with this character this turn. They take damage, but like, it's not really a great option, but it is an option. So like, maybe you roll it old school pushing damage style. Yeah. And then he has an attack power on his first four clicks and his last two clicks, which is Cosmic Hellfire energy explosion and penetrating psychic blast damage dealt to opposing characters that occupy any fire terrain marker is penetrating like so that's a separate thing so that means anyone on your team that deals damage to someone that is occupying a fire terrain marker is going to be penetrating not just his anyone's thankfully he doesn't have this on his first click on his 40 point line because that'd be really nuts to be able to move the nine squares and then Two more squares, 11 squares, uh, to deal, like, six penetrating damage and then whatever else at the beginning of your next turn when you remove them. Uh, that'd be a little nutty, so he's a little balanced in that way, only having that on his last two clicks for his 40-point line. Um, but then he has it on every other starting line. So his 200-point line, he has it, and then on his 100-point line, he has that as a starting line. You got a beefy hypersonic invincible for damage type starting for 200 points. You only gain three clicks of life for 200 points. I would probably play him more on the fun side, 100-point line, little running shot EE pen blast movement fun ability there with still four damage still 11 attack or well down one attack but 11 attack is solid and then i think i think he will see some meta play i think this guy is just primed for it moving crazy amount of speed making attacks for free the only scary thing is he's 40 points and he only has three clicks of life so his survivability just isn't quite there so you have to really try to capitalize on making all those attacks right away so i think he might be fringe i can't say i'm not the biggest meta guy in the world but i think there might be a spot for him on that kind of type of building but again yeah like three clicks of life for 40 points is pretty easy to chew through i think it'd be pretty so too, might be a little scary try and like play him on a drop-off team where you play him at 40 you like pool a lava him or whatever get him to like the second click and then you can carry him up have him sidestep put fire smoke under somebody and then make like a chainsaw or something and do flurry blades that deals pen damage to that person i don't think we see enough tent poles where like that style of play is really like beneficial but it is interesting that there's there's something there like i don't know being able to do pen damage is pretty interesting also yeah it works for like poison um i don't think Damage dealt to opposing... Yeah, that would work for knockback if they were, like, up against blocking or something, and you did knockback to them. That'd be penetrating. Oh, it just yeah? Dam like, that is damage dealt. So, yeah. yeah they're... Well, they wouldn't occupy the... I guess, yeah, if they were already up against yeah, it, then yeah, you're you right. Dang, yeah. Knock them back zero squares if they were, like, already next to, uh, like, elevated or blocking or something. Okay. So maybe, yeah, maybe, like, some sort of wonky drop-off, like, frogman... This yeah, guy. I was about to say, some kind of frogman construct dropper. I don't know. Pool of lava activation. I like it. But Something crazy. Yeah, that is 40 points, and at that point, he's going to be a 17 toughness with essentially two clicks of life. So that is a huge gamble for just that effect. I think, yeah, 100 points is more likely where I'd play him. I think he's perfectly balanced at 100 points. Perfectly balanced. Oh, baby. You want to go ahead and jump into the next uh, next guy here? Yeah, the last thing we've got is old Sasquatch here. 031A. So, we did see Scott Porter showed the little set list card, I believe. And in the set list card, Sasquatch is actually listed at 031B. So, um, Doc Sasquatch was 31A. So, 
they must have changed it or switched it around from when they had that set list card made. But uh, yeah, so he is 031A. Uh, he has Alpha Flight, Howling Commandos, Animal, Monster, and Scientist keywords. This is Walter Lankowski. He has the trait Realm of Great Beasts. At the beginning of your turn, choose one for Sasquatch to use until he chooses again. Perplex, Probability Control, or Support. Three great options to just get at the beginning of your each turn. You get to pick one. And then he has a special speed power for his first three clicks. That is Charge, Leap Climb, and Quake. When Sasquatch uses Quake, he deals normal damage. And after resolutions, he may take a terrain action as free. So he has super strength on dial so you can charge pick up a uh, terrain do your quake or just make an attack and then you can make a terrain action as free afterwards when it says he deals normal damage so quake would normally be instead of normal damage uh, hit characters take two damage instead i believe that the way that that's worded you have to split the damage between like hit characters because otherwise it would just say like instead of two damage they'll they take three instead, right? So, dealing normal damage, so. you'd, tar you'd target, you'd hit however many, and then normal damage would be split. So, it's actually not necessarily always a better version of Quake. He could do three to one person, which is good, and then he gets that free terrain action, but if you wanted to Quake, like, four people, one of them's just not taking damage. Instead of dishing out eight damage, uh, like, two to each person... You're dishing out three split between them all. At least that's how I'm interpreting it. But he's a fun dial. Um, he is standard size, which is that's fine, I guess. The last Sasquatch that we got was not. He was colossal or giant. Uh, he has that special speed power for his first three clicks. Each one of those clicks he has uh, super strength with. He has invulnerability for his first two clicks. Outwit for his first three with three damage. Um... I guess Quake, that Quake would also work with Empower, though, so that's another thing to consider. Interesting. Ooh, that is uh, nice. He has regular Quake on clicks four through six, his last three clicks with Sidestep, and he's got Toughness from clicks three through five, and then he ends with a 16 Defense and Regen on click six, and he gets to use Close Combat Expert for his last three clicks. So pretty short dial for Sasquatch here. I would have liked to have seen like a little bit more survivability from him, but he is kind of, you know, just a cursed scientist dude, and he's not exactly he's no Wendigo, I guess, when it comes to uh, unkillability. But it is cool that we're seeing some more Alpha Flight, although I think Sasquatch, out of the Alpha Flight that we've gotten, Sasquatch is like one of the recurring ones when we haven't seen Shaman or really. It like, is true, Peter isn't it? Puck. Like we haven't seen a lot of them. Uh, repeated, but we've seen a lot of Sasquatch. So, well, it's Sasquatch nice was him. last made with Shaman, right? In Iron Man, did we get another Sasquatch since the Iron Man set? I think he was. Was he not in XDPS? I thought he was in XDPS for some reason. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. We did get the XDPS one. Oh, I forgot about him. Yeah, the Wendigo yeah. other version of Wendigo. Yeah, that's right. Okay, right. he was the uncommon to Wendigo's rare. Yeah, so. That makes sense. Yeah, same one. He was a giant in that, and obviously a longer dial because he was on a 25-click long, uh, a 2x2 two two dial instead of a single base. But right. yeah, uh, fun piece. I don't know where it's going to filter out as far as like in the rare slot. Um, but yeah, for what it's worth, having an outwit and sealed is always good. He's you know, going to have either perplex or prob probably the majority of the game and the ability to heal somebody with support as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be one of your main attackers, but even if he is, he has like a pseudo flurry kind of thing. So that's cool. I like him. It's pretty fun. Uh, if you want to hit refresh, WizKids just posted like 20 minutes ago while we were recording a new Sasquatch, the 031B rare prime. If you also want to talk about him, that's kind of fun. Yeah, let me refresh the page here wow so yeah doc sasquatch speak of the devil uh he he's not a devil he's a sasquatch but real name is doctored leonard sampson so doc sampson with the sasquatch ah, body, I guess. this yeah. is doc sampson i want people always talk about this doc sampson character that's who he is 
I didn't realize that he had become a Sasquatch. So Mortal Hulk hmm. 2020 uh, is the series, the appearance that they're giving him. See, he has the Hulkbusters keyword, X Factor, Animal, Brute, Monster, and Scientist. I don't. Has Hulkbusters ever been a keyword before? Is that a new one? Yeah, it had to have been, right? I think General Thunderbolt Ross had it. Yeah. I don't know if his legacy card got it. Hulkbusters. Yeah, it used to be an ATA. Okay. Wow. There's not okay. a lot to not a lot to no. pick from in that keyword. Uh, um, this will be yeah. outside of the legacy card for for General Thunderbolt Ross. This will be the first person with that keyword since the Civil War when Doc Sampson got it then. Uh, but anyhow, let's see. His dial just <laughs> The first time I'm looking at it, this is not very impressive. He is 80 points and four clicks long with Leap Climb, Super Strength. Uh, he has Leap Climb his first two clicks, Super Strength for all four of his clicks. Invuln top dial goes down to Toughness. He has four damage without wit on click one, three damage without wit on click two. And then his last two clicks are three damage with Empower. And he gets Charge instead of Leap Climb on those last two clicks. So hopefully his traits convince me. Uh, he has the Green Door. Is his first trait. When Doc Sasquatch would be KO'd by an opposing effect, instead roll a d6 and place the result on his card. If that result is not already on this card, then turn him to click one, otherwise KO him. Oh. Okay, so he just doesn't get KO'd the first time, period. And then if you are insanely lucky, it might take your opponent KOing him seven times, right? Because he'd first time die on the card, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time. Yeah, you could potentially have to eat wow. through this dial seven times. Not likely, Jeez. very unlikely, but interesting. Uh, and the next is Head Shrink. He has traded Perplex. When Doc, Doc Sasquatch uses it to target another friendly character he shares a keyword with, he uh, instead modify all the target's combat values by plus one. That's pretty good. Uh, another friendly, so he can't use it on himself, which would have been really solid, but... Uh, the fact that it modifies damage even this is the first perplex that we have seen that can modify damage in quite a while i think so oh yeah yeah i i'm not in love with the 80 points especially if i if i roll like a five the first time i'd be ko'd and then they hit me again and i roll a five and so he only does that once but the potential is there he's kind of like a don't die you like and if i can get him to like some of his more mobile clicks i don't know just having I, don't know. I feel like for climb. what he is, yeah, the leap climb is probably the toughest part. Eight clicks of life, like if we're saying we're just unlucky and we only get the eight clicks of life, that's not bad for eighty points, right? No, like 10 that, points that, that cuts click. down to it's just the leap. Yeah, Ten points per click. The leap climbs. The leap climb is just a bit of a bummer. I will agree with that. Mm. Yeah, he's cool though. I like the perplex damage. All the all combat, combat values, values by yeah. plus one perplex. Um, yeah, range. Speed, they share a keyword, yeah. so probably monster scientist or animal are your most popular keywords, Doc, which are good keywords, though. Yeah. Monster and scientist are great. I don't think he's replacing a lot of other primes that are in modern right now, but I think it's a fun prime. He's super cool. Yeah. If you can do some dice replacement with him, he might see some crazy play. Also, I don't know, but like I think he's a, I think it's a fun so effect, though. He'll be a fun X Factor prime. Yeah. I don't know if they have one right now. Let's see what is what X Factor got? Uh, Whiz Kid Factor <laughs> from oh like, gosh, is that forever ago? Really from I the, think the so, Deadpool right? Set? Is it just Whiz Kid? Yeah, yeah. So I guess I'm I'm probably playing this guy on any X Factor builds. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think he's replacing any of the current like meta stable primes, just because. Yeah, don't die isn't like that popular, but I could see him fitting onto like some niche kind of team, where it's like, you know, we've got Catwoman that you have to hit like nine times to KO. We've got this guy who you have Jeez. to KO potentially seven times, maybe, maybe only like three or four. Even on like, if you just get like moderately lucky and it takes them three or four times to KO him, that's a lot of wasted effort that they're not really benefiting from. And, yeah, for whatever it's worth, he is, you know, 11 for 4. He could throw a terrain object, do something like that if he needs to, to close the gap. Or just, you okay, know, yeah. TK. I guess he, he has animals, so he can 
uh, team up with Cap, and Cap can give him charge. There's, there's something. Oh, that there. is true. Yeah. yeah, there you go. We we so, fixed yeah. it. He gets charge Cap from gives Cap. Him charge. Easy, <laughs> easy. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, it fixed itself. So. Those are our Wheels of Vengeance previews for this week. I'm very excited for what next week has in store. In just two days, they gave us four figures, two of which are chases, one being a prime, one the rare of that prime. So, like, that's dope. So, yeah, Wheels of Vengeance, it's slightly, you know, just coming in. I'm just, I'm ready for it. Spooky season. It's, I'm all about spooky season, and it's got such a good spooky season vibe. So, it's literally perfect. A plus on releasing the set at like, the perfect time. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I love Pre-release it. This is going to be good fun. vibes. If it actually kicks oh, out around, so awesome. when they're thinking. Um, you know who else has the animal keyword and would theme well with Pegasus Cap Calder? Ooh, because Kazar. Uh, no, I was going to say Cap. <laughs> oh, also Cap. Oh, yeah. Also very true. If Cap hits, he can give. Uh, he can let the werewolves charge. So then their fifteen point line is actually better than their top dial because then they'll have. Uh, what would that be? A five square reach instead of a three square reach. Oh, you're right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. You know what? These kids, it's been love letter after love letter this year. They've been like, here's Avengers prime. Uh, here's an amazing prime captain America. Here is Pegasus cap. And then here's capital. And I'm like, guys, stop. I love you already. You don't have to keep doing this. It's been such a loaded year for like captain America after like me having to like force him onto my nationals team with like empire cap and you know people being like ah it's not really any good whatever caps and now it's just like banger after banger after banger like seriously so awesome cap fans we're eating good we're eating like prime rib steaks every night this year it feels like with all these releases they're so dope prime rib (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) but All right, let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Malcolm Rush over on Facebook asked us some questions here, mostly about Notorious and villains in Hero Clicks. I know, a lot of wheels talk. We're eating our dessert before it's arrived at the table. Let's let's slow down, have our full meal, and uh, let's double back to Notorious here, because Notorious is still an awesome set, and I do still love it. So Malcolm's going to ask us some villain questions here. First one is best, worst, favorite, main villains in Heroclix form all time. I chose all one villain uh, just because I think it'd be easier and more objective to like rank him throughout his many main versions in Heroclix. Um, so I'll just say really quick, I think the best version of Lex Luthor is the Trinity War. Lex Luthor, uh, one of my favorites. I think the worst is the Slosh Fast Forces. And then my personal favorite Lex is Lex Luthor, God of Apocalypse. Ooh, yeah. I love that one. Uh, what was it? like? Well, Quintessence back then. But it was uh, Quintessence, Quintessence yeah. Mastermind, Invincible, like 12 Attack, Psychic Blast, yeah. And like no one could reduce below one, and then oh, he got yeah. a TK is free. He got a TK is free after he hit you, which didn't work for a while because it was only to like target an object, and it's like, well, that doesn't do anything. And now it does. Uh, you can attack again, which is cool. Um, I try to make him work, but ultimately 250 is like way, like just a little too much for what he does. But he's so, so fun. But yeah. All right. I said, I think objectively the best uh, villain is probably Thanos, the legacy. Uh, from mm. gosh whatever that set was uh technically both so it's technically the infinity challenge but you can now use both now that it doesn't really matter um i think he's the best because they had to fix him twice so upon his or- original release i think he was just objectively uh, way too good which makes him the best i guess uh the worst i went with the classic the og killer moth from joker's wild just bad one lightning bolt end cap with mediocre stats and yeah 65 points new legacy one actually i think he's fun like he doesn't make me feel bad that, like i have i still have multiple killer mods um and then my personal favorite is the 059 joker from joker's wild set this is the killing Ooh. joke one where he has 
he has mastermind uh, on his top dial, and then he has ranged combat expert. It goes outwit, then ranged combat expert. And when he uses ranged combat expert, he has improved targeting that ignores characters. And then if he hits with an attack, hit characters are each given up to two action tokens, which was just really solid when I used to play this guy. And he'd hit his stop click, which was stop and mastermind. Obviously not as good as it used to be, but he was a 12 for 4 with range combat expert. And then he also just double action people. So if it was like halfway through the game and it was down to Joker and maybe a few other characters versus like whatever they had left, there's a good chance that you were just locking down one of like the opposing characters for the rest of the game because he just never missed. And he could shoot through his own mastermind fodder. So there's a lot of fun stuff. I almost never even bothered using his poison or anything, but... I really liked him. Yeah. Classic villain. Next up. Classic. Uh, next up, number two is best worst favorite hired help, thug, lackey, criminal, goon, henchman, etc., etc., in hero clicks of all time. I don't have enough experience with the new goons to objectively rank them right now. So I'm saying really quick. Best, just got to go, throwback, shout out, Big Tony, 15-point, Jason-friendly character for Plex. Yeah. He was very icon. I know he's not like a generic goon, but he is the goon to have on your side. I'm saying the worst, ironically, from the same set is the, and this probably isn't truly the worst, but the mercenary from the Harley Quinn set. Oh, the one where that just dies if, if it's the only thing left? You just die. Yeah, so once anything else is dead and it's just the mercenary, they just they just KO themselves. So it's like, wow, you just kind of abandon. So I'd say they're terrible. You wouldn't hire somebody like that. Come on. It's uh, the only, you the only team of generics that will auto-lose if you play just that figure. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Well, it's actually, if your force has any character's name mercenary, so it doesn't even have to be that mercenary. You could play, like, the Deadpool set mercenaries. I think there's some mercenaries from, like, other sets that you could play. And, yeah, you could, like, play... I honestly want to play a team like that. I own all of them for this purpose. I like the mercenaries. They're funny. Um, so, I one time I played this team, and I should play it again, where I, I call it Chess Hero Clicks, where I play a single suited henchman, and then I play the rest of the team as mercenaries, and I keep the suited henchman back. And oh, then I have the all the mercenaries king. go forward. Sure. He's the king, yeah. Uh, and then once you kill the suited henchman, just all the mercenaries die. <laughs> I think it's really funny. Uh, and then my favorite is Thug. Just superior foes of Spider-Man, Thug. Yeah, classic. He's just so great. Yeah. What about you, Sim? Uh, so I, for best, I said the new goon, the OG goon, goon on his chest. Um, not only does he have the best expendable goon role, he also has some really solid powers. He's got plasticity if you just want to throw him in someone's way. He's got underworld, so that's really nice to be able to copy or just have him carry another one of himself. He's got Batman enemies, so he can hand out his 10 or just copy someone else's if you want to, if you've got a couple of these together. So I think these guys are really fun to play just on their own. But then, yeah, the the three through six more than likely going to generate another one makes it like the best, in my opinion. Um, the worst, and for some reason, these guys had like just the longest stretch of being terrible. Uh, it's parademons, just like in general, but uh, more specifically, the uh, parademons from let's see, what was it? From Brave and the Bold, yeah. So mm. there, I don't know if this guy is a specific parademon, like if he was like, you know, Agent Bob of Hydra or whatever. I don't know if it's that kind of situation because he, he is called the parademon as if like he's more special. But he was 94 points with a nine attack top dial, four damage, <laughs> just kind of bad. Uh, but even then, like the, the parademon drill sergeant was 62 points. And it was, yeah, they were just always really, really expensive the most recent ones that we got were from, I want to say, Superman Wonder Woman was the most recent. And they were 45 points for charge, 10 for 3. And then they could have people like mastermind to them and stuff. Uh, it was bad. I, I feel like the Parademons yeah. have gotten a rough shake. 
Um, I think the trench was also in that set, and that was also like a generic. Ooh, was just, like, trench super, was also kind of rough. Yeah, super overcosted. Well, what was Parademon? He was was he fifty in Trinity War? Uh, forty five in Trinity War. Forty five. Yeah, trench was also so tough, and they made like the two hundred point trench later with like yeah. that same sculpt. King trench. Yeah. No, that's just double kinda, check. Oh, and then um, my favorite. Um, I went with the two by two Sentinel. Because I just think I love the animated series, and I, they're not really a goon or like hired help, but they are like the quote unquote like foot soldier of the Sentinel army. Yeah, I think it's very solid. Actually, that's a good choice. Best worst favorite villainy team ability or keywords in Hero Clicks. So I did a mix match of the two. I said the best villain team ability. And this is all of my own opinion. I think it's Masters of Evil. After the change to Masters of Evil, I think that's just really good. Ooh, yeah. And I think when it pops off in swarms, it really pops off. And if we ever got like a generic with Masters of Evil and could just surround people, that'd be really freaking good. Uh, like already it was like so good, like the Wrecking Crew. So worst, this one I chose keyword and it was like a little pre-show discussion that inspired me. I, I think it's the Brotherhood of Mutants. I don't think we've ever had like a full team of Brotherhood of Mutants be like, oh, yeah, these guys are scary when they're played together. Because even XDPS that had some of the best, like normal Magneto was horrible. Pyro was meh. Juggernaut was great. Then like everybody else was just so bad. So I just think I think Brotherhood has never been like, dang, you're playing a Brotherhood team. I'm going to get messed up versus like a Hydra team, Masters of Evil team. You know, even like Secret Society supervillains team feels like it's got like more synergy than just like a Brotherhood team. And yeah. And then personal favorite, uh, Serpent Society. I love the Serpent Society. Uh, this is just as a keyword, or I can shout out the old team ability, which gave them phasing teleport. Um, but they had a fun, the sneak attack trait is a ton of fun for a team. And it was cool getting them slowly throughout a couple of years and then playing them all. But I think we're due for new versions of the Servant Society. I would like to see a full because we're still missing a ton of members of them, like Rock Python and a few others. I would love to see like a full Servant Society team spread here soon. Even though they're not used like at all anymore in comics, they are from my favorite Capron, and I do love the Servant Society. Uh, what about you, Simeon, for keywords and team abilities? So my one of my all time favorite team abilities, just in general, not even like because it's villain based, but happens to be villain based is the Batman enemy and the uh, Sinister Syndicate like team abilities. Um, some of my favorite combos were like, this character would be great if they had a good attack. And then it was, you know, Lady Shiva or whatever has a 12 attack and Batman enemy. So you just like, you can wildcard it, you can do whatever. But so yeah, those are, those are my, uh, I'll say they're the best right now because I think that there's a lot of utility. Um, Worst, oh man, uh, Legion, I guess, isn't like a, that's not a bad guy one. I feel like there's something like around that, that relic of ye oldie time where there used to be one that was real bad. I'll say, uh, with how much protected outwit going on, sometimes Superman enemy feels like it's real rough. Feels like, uh, having all these extra outwits or like potentially working around that. Yeah, isn't great, and it's already like really weird how you have to activate it. You have to be next to somebody who also has it and is lower points. I think if they changed it to like giving that character wild card, but only to or not wild card, geez, uh, giving that character like mastermind, but only to mastermind to somebody who also has the team ability or something. I don't know. It just doesn't feel great. Like having to position all wonky. Um, even like shield team ability seems better with like how I could power action and then still have that plus one if I move outside of adjacency. But I'll say right. that's that's my least favorite just because how many extra steps are involved and how wordy the power is. I always forget how it's how it works until I'm using it. Uh, and then favorite, I, I guess favorite is also best. Like that's I'm gonna go with uh, Batman enemy for best, and then I'm gonna go with oh, for sure. S Syndicate for favorite i guess but no uh <laughs> playing that new that new uh bane getting to like his 13 attack and then sharing that amongst everybody that's next to him was really fun uh obviously i think there'll be other 
there's other options. I think Syndicate actually has the best option where like Kingpin lets you to share it within like six squares or four squares or something. And so if you even just like having like a 12 attack spread across like the, the whole field and then you've got Iron Spider who gives everybody that. So there's a lot of like fun, interesting options with like wild card mixed in. So thankfully that team ability is copyable and makes it even more interesting. Uh, as far as keywords go, um, gosh, Gotham City Underworld or just Gotham City usually has like a lot of like the cooler rogues and stuff. Uh, is there do the rogues have their own specific like central city or I don't I don't think Ooh, so. I don't know. That's actually I thought they used to have the rogues keyword. Did they not? Do they? Because I know that like some of the more recent ones have not had. Uh, um flash set. yeah they have rogues mirror okay. master captain cold and golden glider they all have the rogues keyword oh, i guess yeah grod's just not considered a rogue then uh <laughs> dang rip grod oh yeah, yeah i guess so oh dang yeah uh rogues are yeah it's definitely like one of my favorite like villain groups and then again sinister syndicate you can like swap them in it's one of the few villain groups where it makes sense to have such a variety of people that are in it whereas yeah like i mean i guess brotherhood makes sense too but there's like core members to brotherhood that like never change or shouldn't really and the like the rogues come and go the sinister syndicate has like been multiple variations throughout the years yeah so many versions so yeah that's probably my favorite uh and i don't really have like a least favorite keyword that i can think of be like something that's really niche like superman revenge squad or whatever that just doesn't come up mm, enough to right for me to even log it in my brain yeah now that like you say like rogues i just had to get like check and see but first one mirror master hellboy the bellboy commented and he said it looks fun but mirror master is the transporter for the team that he's on and that just isn't represented here and i'm like you're right they should have gave him like phasing carry four or something for mirror master instead of just <laughs> running shot <laughs> now that is a power uh that's yeah dude now that jeez uh anyways <laughs> the what were we on number four uh, which villain do you want whiz kids to make in upcoming sets that have that has been announced so far this actually i was really struggling to try to like think because i feel like the ones they're gonna make are just they have to be made right so there's not really a real villain in werewolf by night We've already seen, like, where, like so for next phase, we've already seen, like, Werewolf, we've already seen Ted, we've already seen Elsa. Um, and then, like, I am Groot. There's not really villains in that. There's a goo monster, and there's the little plant people. Um, uh, Miss Marvel, I didn't see. And then She-Hulk, the villain is, like, A-bomb. And we see, we saw A-bomb. So, well, I don't really want villain, the though. weird dude. Yeah. It's, um... But I don't like her want, villain I don't is like the like shows. internet community. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I don't know. Because like Abel, like, got like uh, here. Here's the villain I want. There, I want yeah. her court rival, uh, Matt Murdock. That's yeah. the villain for She Hulk that I want. <laughs> um, no, but I did end up saying I want Carly Morgenthau because she was never made. We got no flag smashers at all in the first Disney Plus. And also, we didn't get any... I think this is, might just be a Marvel thing, though, because we got no Flag Smashers, like, whatsoever in any media, like, any uh, Funko Pops, Lego sets, anything, action figures, anything. But I would like to see Carly Morgenthau get made. Or, uh, if we can now, Marvel Legends did it, but after, like, more so got released, we got to see more zombies. We got, like, Iron Man zombie and Scarlet Witch zombie. I would like to see the Scarlet Witch zombie in next phase, if they're saying we can go back and choose some characters from older stuff uh that we missed out on in disney plus that'd be cool but if not um then i don't know and then for the unnamed dc set i want snow flame oh god please give us snow flame he's in harley please. So. um possible. yeah so he was in harley and then this new peacemaker series uh Is he, he really? runs into peacemaker yeah he's like shows up in peacemaker very briefly uh okay. in issue three. Oh, so i thought you meant the tv series oh no sorry yeah like, no i meant the comic i can't believe i, I meant the comic uh <laughs> yeah nope okay. sorry i meant the comic peacemaker tries hard That's i actually I, I did know that about the comic i just 
Okay. Yeah. Talked about one TV show, and then I immediately assumed you were talking yep. about the other TV that show. That would be so wild if, like, you'd already seen all of Peacemaker, and then I just say that, and you're like, no, where was he? Yeah. How did I miss well, him? I was like, yeah, that man, would be wild. Like, there wasn't a lot of cameo, uh, like, one shot villain or anything like that in Peacemaker. It's a good show, but yeah, there wasn't, like, a lot yeah. of fan service random stuff like other shows have had. Um, Gosh. Besides who I assume is I mean, Monster Mala on episode. And it's oh, just like, why right. is he? We've already yeah. seen the set list of wheels. Right. Gosh. I, would I like... couldn't think. I was scratching my head for the Deadpool Weapon X set. I have literally no idea like what Deadpool villain I want. There was this one old Deadpool comic I have. I forget his name. His name's like El Murto or something like that. And he's oh, just sure. like. A bounty hunter. He'd be kind of interesting. He was like a tough foe for Deadpool. I think like one two of the... issues. Oh, uh, yeah. I was going to say, like, for the the Deadpool Weapon X stuff, um, it'd be cool to finally get like, Romulus and Remus, but that doesn't really make sense. That's like a Wolverine Ooh, thing. Yeah. It's, it's very old by now. It's like early 2000s. So if we were going to get them, it would have been back then probably. Um, as far as like a Deadpool specific villain, like he's kind of his own villain most of the time, but I would like to see like some version of Strife, like the evil cable clone. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forces yeah. Big old armor guy. Yeah, and I think this is a more recent comic, so I don't know how likely it is, but he forces cable to like quote unquote go out and assassinate like certain mutants. And or I say cable, he forces Deadpool to. Uh, go out and assassinate certain mutants. So he's like shooting these like mutant kids and stuff with like a demutant gun. Dang. So like he okay. hits it, hits them with it, and it like takes away their powers temporarily, so that they're off Strife's radar, yeah. and he thinks that they're gone because they're not showing oh. up on like his weird Cerebro thing. But that okay. would be like some sort of cool whatever. And we did get Strife in Deadpool X Force, so I guess That's he's not same. entirely out of like the question. I just don't find him. Like, I don't know where he's supposed to fit in villain-wise. Because he's not just, like, evil Cable. He's, like, different than Cable. But at the end of the day, he is just evil Cable. And he's not as good of, like, a villain as, like, Sinister. I would really like to get uh, the Sins of Sinister kind of situation where not necessarily, like, Sinister versions of characters, but maybe he has something like Machine Smith did where he makes a bystander that just, like, copies their top Ooh. dial or whatever. Cause, I like yeah, that. The Sins of Sinister storyline was actually the first like X Men thing I read in a while, where I was like, "This is actually very interesting and very wild." Uh, but he wouldn't really make sense for a Deadpool set. I don't know. And then, uh, yeah, out of like the next phase stuff, gosh, I didn't find the villain in Moon Knight to be super interesting. Oh, yeah, Harlow or Harlow, oh, yeah, Harrow. Harrow. Kind of forgot about him. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I didn't find him to be super interesting. I don't think like the generic villains, goons, or whatever from that show were super interesting. Um, yeah, She Hulk. A lot of it's just like litigation stuff. Like her actual like quote unquote enemies are just like these creepy dudes online that are like trying to ruin her life. And then right. technically the one does like Hulk out at some point, but then. Yeah, I'm not, no spoilers. So disturbing. Um, so disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, gosh, what else is there? I don't know if we'll see um, Jonathan Majors, but he was in the, he was like one of the missing components of the Loki seri series. Oh, sure. And he was like an actual villain that you could actually tangibly make sense to fight characters and stuff. So there's one. And then, yeah, that. What do we know about the DC one? Is it just that it hasn't been done before? Is that what they said? Yeah, hasn't been done before. So yeah, there's a ton of DC characters. I like DC cosmic stuff. So like a monitor, anti-monitor situation. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're getting Mr. Set, Mind. We, we do know that. Idea. We're getting Mr. Mind. Is that the little he was worm shy. dude? Little caterpillar. Yeah, little worm guy. Okay. So we know one character that's going to be more than likely in that set. We saw Mr. Mind, so. Okay, yeah. I don't really know where he fits in the comics-wise. I would like, um, because we got Doom Patrol in Team Up, I would like some more Doom Patrol villains, like uh, Mr. Negative and Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. 
from like the the classics. Oh, that'd be uh, cool. Did I say Mr. Negative? No, it's uh, Mr. Nobody. Jeez. Yeah. They've no, got similar close. names, though. So that's fine. They do. Mr. But, Mr. Nah. Uh, that's just me like throwing stuff out because I don't know what that set's actually going to be. But uh, those are some cool villains. And then I guess, honestly, I would take more like lantern villains because it doesn't feel like we've got like Atrocitus and Sinestro. And then technically we got, I mean, not technically, we did get Larflees, but it doesn't really feel right. like we have an actual lineup of villains for most of the yeah, uh, I agree. lantern cores. Yeah, I agree. No, I'm with you. I wish we'd get a little more fleshed out Lancer and Core villains. That'd be cool. Yeah. I don't know. That's a that's a hard one. Ask me like what I would like to see when it comes to villains, because I would definitely need to know like what heroes are going to be involved to know what villains I'd like paired with it. Oh, exactly. I agree. I very much agree. Because once you know the heroes, and you kind of get an idea, well, I want them from this rogues gallery or this storyline or blah, 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 blah. Be like, yeah, that'd just be way easier. I think just doubling back on Deadpool only because I just thought of it. And he is like the villain of this run slash the main character of this run, but he, a Deadpool kills the Marvel universe, like 300 point Deadpool that oh, just yeah. has the answer for like everything, like any Marvel character to like counter them or something. Um, that would be great. That'd actually be really sick. So he, I would really enjoy that. Honestly, it'd be fun. I can't remember if he makes it to the, the main Marvel continuity or not. It's obviously like in that story. They did it twice. He, uh, it like he kills the he, Marvel they technically universe. Did something else make him? Because that's evil that Deadpool, Deadpool. I want to say or evil Deadpool. It's one of them. Uh, yeah. Evil Deadpool or Dark Deadpool. I want to say is technically him. But I want like a Deadpool. Deadpool kills the Marvel universe. I think it is. I want to say it's evil Deadpool. Dread. That seems right. Evil Deadpool or Dark Deadpool? No, it is Dark Deadpool. Evil Deadpool is not. I don't think, oh, geez, so confusing. I think it is Dark Deadpool, though. Ugh, HC Realms, very annoying. Try to find this. Uh, Dark D, there we go. Dark Deadpool seems right. He seems right. Yeah, I'd have to look Even at the card to see like, the flavor text and stuff. I want to say Evil Deadpool is from a storyline where someone stitched together Deadpool's parts yeah. to make an evil version of Deadpool. And then this Dark oh. Deadpool is actually... That's yeah. Is that what Dreadpool is? Because yeah, one of them was just like every time a body part had gotten cut off, somebody was like going around collecting it, and they, took them. yeah, they had remade Deadpool from just like limbs that he had lost along the way or whatever. That's evil Deadpool for sure. Okay, and then yeah, so yeah, it would yeah, have so to it's be... probably either Dark Deadpool or Dreadpool are kills the. Marvel Universe. Dreadpool has his Deadpool illustrated trait. That seems like it might be something. Maybe. I don't know. Could be it. But yeah, yeah, like a 200, 300 point fanboy dial of Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe would be so sick. With like, you know, Thor's hammer, cap shield, surfboard, you know, all those stuff broken at his feet. That'd be fun. As like a villain. Okay. Next up. Which villains do you want WizKids to make into legacy cards? And what would they look like? Pretty simple. I want DC 10 Lex so badly into a legacy card. I think he's like the end all accurate version of Lex Luthor. Um, he had a really cool like boom tube ability to just like phasing, move, attack, really simple. And then he had one ability, which is he could bring in any object that had kryptonite in its name, just like once per game for each bring in kryptonite, or it was like power, I want to say, something like that. So it'd be cool if he could just generate a kryptonite terrain marker instead. Um, and then it could just like, do some counters and stuff to super people. I think that'd be really cool. I think it'd be really fun. And then my Marvel pick for a legacy card is Zombie Super Scroll. And I think you keep the food and hunger tokens. Um, and I do think you keep the ability to choose powers. But instead, he can choose powers based off the number of boo tokens on his card instead. Um, maybe he can only choose one power right away and then he can choose an additional power for each food token or he doesn't take damage or something like that. But basically, so he can't just choose off rip four powers um, and then just be busted broken. But I do want him to work similarly to how the zombies work if we brought back zombie super scroll. Be so cool. It would be so cool. Uh, Simeon, who do you want to get legacy cards? Uh, my first one is the... So this is like... 
a dumb pick for me because I don't actually own the figure, but I think it's just a really iconic figure. Dangerous. Uh, yeah, Dangerous. Ultron from Age of Ultron. So this is the the six armed, uh, colossal dude, or he becomes colossal, I guess, at the end of his dial. Does he not? Maybe this one doesn't. Okay, never mind. I thought he did, but uh, either way, really cool cover. I would say really cool storyline, but it's actually just kind of bad. Uh, but it was an interesting idea, if only it had been executed really well. Uh, but yeah, I think the six-armed Age of Ultron or the Phalanx Ultron also very interesting options. Of course, they're chases from a uh, organized play set, so it's even harder to get than a normal chase yeah. would be, at least most of the time. It's old enough now where you can pick them up for relatively low amount, but um, he starts, he's one of those characters that has three special powers, but you don't get them until like kind of weird, inopportune times. So his dial as is, he starts with running shot, um, energy explosion, invincible, and then a special damage power in five damage. So he's got uh, mastermind, outwit, and stealth on that damage power. I think that's pretty cool. I don't see a reason to like really why they would have to change that uh maybe yeah i don't know i don't think they'd have to change that he has a special defense power his last three clicks and i bet you can guess what i'm gonna say they should do with that instead of regeneration on a one two after actions resolve he can use flurry or pulse wave as free instead of that guess what i'm gonna say those three defense powers should be could possibly be a certain four letter S word. Yeah, it's gonna be stop clicks. <laughs> three stop clicks in a row. Uh he does have Jeez. pretty mediocre stats on those last three clicks, so I think keeping the regen with uh three stop clicks in a row, um maybe even giving him like some sort of like ability where if he masterminds to a drone, or maybe that's like a trait where he can use leadership and then uh, generate like a bystander that's like an Ultron drone because he had a ton of drones in the Age of Ultron universe. It was pretty much yeah. the whole world was drones. So have something where he can mastermind or like absorb the drone to heal. And then his speed power on clicks three through six is charge and then give a close combat action to make three close combat attacks with his damage value locked at his printed value, which is either five damage on click three or four damage on the rest of the clicks with exploit. So really good. And I don't honestly, I don't honestly hate it as is Uh, his point value is two fifty. I think if you slap three stop clicks where those defense powers are and you give him like a trait where he can generate some little uh, helpers along the way, depending on what those things do, I think this guy could be like 150 and playable. I think 250 is just way too much. I think he gets like, obviously as is, there's no way you'd ever play him because action economy is just real bad on him. At 250, he's not really keeping up. He's not able to KO at least like one figure every turn. But yeah, triple lightning bolt, maybe give him like uh, traded Beal's pen damage or something. But then he does have exploits, so I I don't know. He's a rough, it's a rough one, but I like that one. Uh, next one is the Professor X and Magneto duo. Obviously, um, this would just work like the other duos that we've seen. So, uh, I don't know what an appropriate cost for these guys would be, but they've definitely got to have, like, you know, TK, mind control. Maybe if they use one, they get to use the other as free, um, to kind of reference the duo attack situation. Uh, but yeah, I really like that sculpt. It's another... You know, Wolverine and the X-Men, it's a super rare, so kind of up there, kind of hard to get. And then my big DC pick, this one's going to blow you out of the water, water Calder. No one would ever okay. guess this one. I want the Brainiac Skull ship back. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my it's gosh. It's technically a villain, so it technically... Oh. The problem with this is there was a... I don't know what the situation was, but there is two different dials for the Brainiac Skull ship. There was like a mass market one or something, like a convention one, and then one that like went to stores or something. And so there's technically two different dials. And so picking which one would be the first rough half of it, and then legacy carding something that has, let's see, five traits, and then a... There's so much. Essentially, uh, like a... It's got like a resource dial on the one. 
and then the other I've one is yeah. five traits and then uh two special powers oh well, two traits and then three traits that are for like the resource dial uh i think if they just cut the resource dial off they just pretend like that's not there or they just make it really simplified okay. with like how you know what it does i don't know but i i think it'd be hilarious to get these guys back into the game since personally i feel like they never really were in the game i never i played against them sure. a handful of times but always just like in super casual golden age settings i have literally never played against this i didn't realize oh one's purple and one's silver oh interesting okay yeah. there's a difference there's a pretty visible difference there's literally you type in skull ship and there's like 20 different things to click on and it's very it's a lot it's a lot to look at here uh what's going on it's fun okay maybe not the 225.1 with a nine attack top dial oh no it has attack mode i see it switches interesting how curious <laughs> how curious yeah it would look sick i do agree with that like it would look super cool to have that on the table again yeah attack mode travel wonder. mode yeah maybe there you go Next up, Malcolm asks, ooh, which villain would you like to be and why? I guess there's there's kind of some tough ones, and I feel like there's some obvious answers. For me, this is also not surprising. Uh, Lex Luthor. Sadly, this does mean having to be bald, um, which is a pretty tough L to take. Don't get me wrong. That does suck. But, uh, yeah, dude's uh, dude's got it all. He's wealthy. In my opinion, he's right. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'd be cool being. I like I say two things. Yeah, I got it all. Rich, yeah. bald. That's what like. What do, else? What do do I want? get just their powers, or do I also get like their crimes oh, yeah. are pinned do on I me? Become, like, cause... yeah, do I become them? Which villain would you like to be? Do I just become I am now yeah. that villain? I'd say uh, number one. I thought it was God oh, Doctor Doom. Great power set. There's like, nah, he's all messed up though. I don't want to be all messed up. Yeah. I'm vain. I'm just like Dr. Doom. Just like Dr. Doom, I am also incredibly vain, and I don't want to have scar <laughs> tissue for a face. Um, I was going to say, like, yeah. I wouldn't mind... Uh, gosh, what's his name? I wouldn't mind Professor Zoom's power set. But I don't want... Okay. I don't want Professor Zoom's mind or crimes. I don't want, like, that portion. <laughs> I just want speed force. That's all. And at that point, I'm not becoming a villain. So I think if I'm... If I have to become the villain, I have to take on like their their crimes and stuff. Then I think, um, gosh, I think I'd go with like a less less evil person because I that'd be just be it's not very villain of me, but it'd be really hard to live with like some of the crimes that some of the villains have committed. So, oh man, let's see. I feel like Magneto's pretty justified as like a villain. I okay, feel like sure. that. That'd yeah. be fine, and yeah, he's got a pretty cool power set. That'd be all right. Um, Kite Man, mm, I would he just take... does like fun capers. He doesn't really have powers though; he Ooh. just has like, gadgets. But that'd be yeah. fine. I'd be fun. I'd be fine with like the the jokey joke villain guy who like their the heroes never take it too hard on because like yeah. what's his big crime? Stealing stuff. Hmm, that is a good on the opposite end of the spectrum. That is pretty good. Now that you say that, little uh. <laughs> just like we killer moth or somebody who's just kind of like yep yeah kind of do whatever wings are cool that's I'm, it i'm the pied you piper know? i just i play music and the uh, people like follow me rat. I, he's probably done something yeah. really dark though i don't know i know mirror master yeah, for sure has so i'm not saying him uh yeah. Gosh, yeah. It's I know to... it might be in Major Force. Major Force has a cool haircut. He's totally never <laughs> done anything super evil. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> oh, geez. It's hard totally to not. think of like villains that haven't been put in like the Or just say whatever and just go like, you know what? Nah, dark side. Yeah. I'll just be dark side. I'll I mean, live if you're gonna go yeah, if you're gonna go like or... all the way to, you know, unaliving people, you might as well go for the unalive yeah. equation. Oh, exactly. Anti -life, that's what it is. Never mind. Yeah, I don't. Might as well I don't think way. ever. You know what? I'd be Sinestro. It's purple though. Mm. Weird looking. Nah. I could be Larflees. I'm like halfway there. I. I like my You're halfway there. Uh, I like being alone and collecting things. So. Ooh, there you I go. I just need like the cosmic power and lantern and stuff. 
Atrocitus is sick. I'd be Atrocitus. Whatever. That's fine. Well, at that point, and Sinestro is not that bad. Yeah. Now that I think about it, I'd, I could be Dexter, a cat on a revenge mission. Yeah, that's there you fine go. Just you're, you're now a cat. Yeah. Just a flying hmm, space kind of cat from Earth. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, there you go. I could be Tyler Hayward, just a jerk. Well, he was a little bit more than a jerk, I guess. But, like, yeah, he's just, like, a bureaucrat, like, evil bureaucrat, which yeah, we've got like, plenty of those. So, be, uh, gosh. Timmy, well, that's not a villain. That's a politician. <laughs> what's the difference, Calder? <laughs> uh, we could be, oh, what's the name of that? Turkish Delight Baron Senator Zemo. Kelly? Oh, Baron Zemo. Oh, jeez. I don't know. I MCU Baron Zemo is pretty close to as evil as normal Baron Zemo. I mean, he bombed like That's a true. lot of people is, and yeah. killed a lot of people and very he like people like to be like, oh, funny. He's he's cute, funny, quirky Turkish. Look at him do his funny little dance. He's like one of the worst human beings ever. Like we've but just totally forget only... kills, like Black Panther dad and countless other people at the UN <laughs> and like drowning that dude the... upside down in his uh, thing. Disney like, plus stuff. Then he's not so bad. Yeah, right. If you pretend like, you know, he's he just only funny, appeared in Disney just, Plus. Yeah. He just has bad taste in candy and funny dance moves. He's totally not the most reprehensible human being on the planet. Uh, and also killed five people while they were sleeping. Uh, and then also made his butler kill more super. Sl- yeah. Like he's Baron's. He was literally so evil. <laughs> but no, it's OK. He did a funny little dance. So he's fine. It's true. We like him now. Man. <laughs> got to be like some villain out there that's uh something i don't know now every time i think of a new one i'm like nope i remember a time where they did something pretty pretty rough so uh, messed up yeah, yeah. that's the toughest thing that's like hard... there's some of those you don't want on your conscience almost it's just a little too rough no a little too much yeah <laughs> yeah yep I'll, I'll just call it uh, there. i don't i don't think um, i can do a better one than uh kite man hey man yeah also that's got to be like one of the more exciting villains to be because like the odds are against you but you're also not like trying to dominate the world you're just trying to get by or get a little extra bread you know yeah dude a little splash of cash a little extra ching in the pockets that's all yeah okay absolutely next up last question this is a more wheels of engine centered question best worst favorite generic hero clicks of all time what a wild thing because generics are just they've always been here since the dawn of time of all of hero clicks they've they've always filled a beautiful role and just generics mean so much to everybody in the world of hero clicks we both love generics and it's man to say best worst favorite generics of all time is just truly truly yeah a heavy heavy task uh, so, anyways, um, favorite zombie scroll, worst the fury, uh, best the uh, bystander sentinels. I do really think these bystander sentinels might be the best. They are definitely underplayed. Um, yeah, That's but best pretty... maybe just goes. Yeah, I don't know. Solid. Best is so. Yeah, but I think worst probably the fury. Maybe just because he's in recent me- memory, but like for overcosted points, it doesn't fit the generic role of being like a cheap dude to throw on teams. Um, and just not super interesting. And then Zombie Super Scroll is my personal favorite because I do think it is still hilarious that they made a chase, a generic, and I love that it's a chase zombie uh, generic, and it's pretty sick. <laughs> and then, yeah, I it do, I don't know. Best best is probably, you could convince me 18 million different times of 18 million different answers of who the best generic is, and I'd probably agree with you. There's just so many good ones. Yeah. But I do think the Sentinel big bystanders are underplayed, and I do think they are just amazing. I'm going to toss out... Um... Best, I'm gonna say Symbiote from Beyond Amazing. I think Ooh, he is so cool. Yeah, like point wise right. and yeah. just like amount of sheer anger that like people experience when facing off against them. Uh, they're like their own villains in a, like fourth wall breaking kind of way. So I'm gonna say those are the best. Uh, but yeah, I could change my answer just by looking through different sets each time. I'm gonna say the worst, and again, I like. There's been a lot of bad ones, but I'm going to say the worst is the Super Police from Elseworlds. They are really bad for 40 points, and uh, they have the police team ability, but they have zero range, so they can't even like work as a unit. Not really, not effectively. And then, uh, yeah, they just 
they were easy to ignore and easy to just kind of one shot if they like tried to tie you up back in the day nowadays like they don't take pushing damage but back in the day they didn't even have indom so it was just real real rough uh and then my favorite is and probably always will be the moonborn dune wolf from major oh my Razor gosh Ray. i love oh. that guy he has one of the best team abilities in the whole game mage spawn at the beginning of the game you choose a friendly character with the highest point value to be this team's master so you don't really choose it's just the, whoever the highest is and then if a character using this team ability is within four squares of its master when the master is given a move action then the character using this team ability may be given a move action as a free action full speed move so like they don't have charge anywhere on their dial but they essentially get charge and then they have a trait when Moonborn Dune Wolf occupies hindering terrain, he can use Flurry. Yeah, that's right. My nine for two is coming at you. Or maybe I get lucky and I get knocked to my eight with blades that I have for two clicks randomly in the middle of my dial. Um, I actually, I really do like these guys so much. It's just a shame that, like, all their stats are terrible. Like, they didn't used to be as bad, but nowadays they're real bad. He ends with a seven for two. Yeah, it's so the classic, classic Moonborn Dune Wolf. Man, I just the PTSD flashbacks, the Maze Knight Resurrection yeah. versus Lord of the Rings game we played. Gosh. I want to say that was the set they went against. Jeez, yeah, yikes. Uh, but that is all of Malcolm's questions. He says, "Have a happy Halloween." We will, Malcolm. Have a good time. What's you know what, Malcolm? Here's a question for you. What is trick or treating like in Japan? How do the Japanese celebrate Halloween? All right, we'll check back in a week and see if Malcolm responds to our question. We'll see. Anyways, moving on to the Discord, which of course, here comes the spiel for Patreon. We give away all sorts of cool stuff on Patreon. Also, exclusive content. The five dollar tier gets you access to our freaking Discord, where we play all sorts of games every once in a while, a couple times a month. We also do giveaways. We also do action tokens that you can get, which are really fun. And then you can also get cool bystanders that are custom made by Luke. Makes them with pictures of Simeon, Ian, and myself being the funny little bystander characters. It's quite funny, um, and even much, much more, as well as exclusive content that will never be released to the general public, but if you give us money, then you will get to see it. And there's quite a few of those videos, actually, quite a lot. Um, even some this year were just made specifically only for Patreon. So it's fun. It's a great time. Join our Patreon. It's grand old time. These are questions from those fine folk. James asks, do you think the Daredevil Legacy card will be anywhere near as busted as he used to be? Now, to be fair, I never thought the old Daredevil was busted busted for 60 points no he's really good i never thought he was busted and i do think them choosing him for a legacy i hope they can find something unique and interesting to do with a multi-dialed character like himself i want to say this is the first multi-dialed character they ever chose yeah for There's, a legacy card just like it's a, off it was rip, a I don't different think. time when he was good like hero clicks was yeah. just different like there was plenty really of was. don't die stuff available id cards were legal uh, that was like a ton of his utility was just what like pushing him to click two where he had perplex and then using him to call in IDs and you couldn't like kill him because well it just took a long time to kill him. Right. Um, the, it always feels like there's two ways of playing Daredevil. It was like oh he almost never dies or you get crit hit and then the next attack is like an eleven or something yep. and then he he's done. Yeah, he dies in like one flurry. Uh, yeah, I had, I've actually yeah I saw that happen once. I don't remember if it was my Daredevil or not, but um, yeah, I don't I don't think the original one was super busted, uh, mostly because it was just like entirely based on luck. It wasn't like he just never died. It was some games he would never die, and then some games he died right away. Uh, and other than that, like I don't know. With just, like, what's on his dial, I don't know if he's good enough to, like, if that dial's good enough if it worked exactly the same as the old one. Because a lot of his utility was being able to, like, call in IDs, sidestep, perplex, like, right. different stuff like that. Obviously, what does he have? Like, poison, plasticity, hypersonic, precision strike, charge quake. He does not have precision strike on hypersonic yeah. click. It is charge quake, poison, plasticity, sidestep blades, and then it's just hypersonic when it's hypersonic. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean... It depends on what they do, but he could be good. I just I don't think 
don't die is like a thing anymore. We just don't have enough. Not yet. We really so, don't, man. Um, with like the new Catwoman and potentially, I mean, like the new Catwoman, maybe that uh, that Prime Sasquatch that I talked about earlier. Maybe like there's enough stuff that like eventually we'll get back to a don't die team. But the problem with those is they don't score a lot of points. They kind of focus on not giving opponents points. And they're not usually right. like, super offensive. So, yeah. Uh, the next question we have from Luke. He says, if you had to assign a song as the theme song of a set, what would you choose for Wheels of Vengeance? And bonus points for Notorious while we're at it as well. I feel like Notorious's theme is just the whatever song is Notorious. Yeah, Notorious, Notorious Big. Like, that's got to be. Yeah, Notorious Big. That's got to be it, right? B-I-G, old Notorious B-I-G. It's got to be it. Like. I don't know what else. I don't know what else it would be. For Wheels of Vengeance, though, I feel like Highway to Hell just has to be it. Oh, okay. Not that I'm saying that my choice is the correct choice, but I'm like in my mind, I'm just like I don't know what else. I know I did the song reference, whatever. Big Wheel, keep on turning uh, for last week's episode name, yeah. but like I do think like Highway to Hell is pretty pretty up there contender. There's some pretty I don't good know, what ones. Do you think? Um, gosh. Uh, man, if there's not a ghost writer in this it, set that uh, has Highway to Hell flavor text, I'll be so disappointed now that I think about it. <laughs> that's true, man. That's missed opportunity for sure. If they don't, uh, uh, Hellraiser so. by um, oh, I guess mm. our Aussie's the one that gets credit for it, but it was like Motorhead. Uh, that's a pretty solid song. Um, that kind of Ghost Riders kind of do some Hellraising. Uh, gosh. Dracula, just for Dracula being in it. Oh yeah, uh, turn the page by old old Bob Ooh. Seger. Okay, it's a a motorcycle song, I think. Or maybe it's a trucking song. I guess I don't remember. Um, there's whoever sings the like. Uh, I'm a cowboy on a steel horse. I ride. Horse I ride. Bon Jovi. <laughs> Is that Bon Jovi? Yeah. Isn't it? I maybe I don't know. It make me it makes me feel bad for you. Dead or alive by Bon Jovi. Was. Dead Ugh. or alive, right? Yeah. Bon Jovi's song. It doesn't really yeah. like, fit the theme. It like the lyrics fit. It just doesn't I really fit the theme. Dead or alive, like the dead or alive uh, TF2 item, and that's all that search popped up for. <laughs> well, my brain is broken. Uh, dead or alive song. Wanted. Dead or alive. Wanted dead or alive by Bon Jovi. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, That'd be very fitting. Jeez, wheels of vengeance. There's got to be something by like Hammerfall, where it's like fire demon spawn in the middle of the night. They basically just like sing out their like D and D campaigns, which I enjoy. Oh, okay, nice. But, like, that would you know, be very fitting. Yeah, yeah. It's just like those like power metal bands. Uh, I don't. There's got to be like a hundred options for that, but. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like old Bob Bobbert Seeger's Turn the Page. I'm not going to say that's the best option, but that's definitely the one I like the most at this moment. Okay. Right on. Right on. And then our last question from The Maggot. What are your favorite prefixes? I like, for me, pseudo is the best. What are you trying to get? from this question i don't understand but okay sure um yeah i don't I know mean, i said inter and intra because i think that's funny and topical yeah. there we go uh a that's a prefix right i, anti, I was testing my remembrance uh, of, of english knowledge anti uh, is like, like a yeah in in well, one right that's it uh in yeah Right? Wouldn't it be? Yeah, I don't know. On two, on two. On's probably one. I, I don't know. None of these are my favorite because I've i never really thought about it. <laughs> I just but, type uh, the words, man. When people ask me to type words, I just I just type them. I don't... Oh. I don't, put, I don't care that much about it. Big fan so, of... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Bi and Una and Tri. Quad. Mm. I'm just going with those because I know that you can add the word cycle to them. And they're all different. That's things. very true. So I, I think those all fit. Um, yeah, that sounds right. They would be the prefix. Yeah. So those, are, yeah, cool. those are just numbered things, I guess. Just yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
This is your great prefix. Incredible. Just the different numbers. Beautiful. Amazing. I, can I get a scoop of the tri potatoes, please? Quad uh, potato. You just slap yeah, absolutely it on there, right? A little, little bit here. Re. So. Right? Because there's refried ooh. beans. So I was thinking, for some reason, I was thinking like tri fried beans. But then I remembered refried beans is already a thing. So you could do uh, triple fried. They've already been refried. Yeah. But now we're going to triple fry the beans. Fry them again. Refried squared. Uh, mm. I don't know. Re's oh, baby. You know they just again, right? keep getting mushier and mushier. Ooh, baby. Or actually, probably harder and harder. Keep refrying the yeah. beans. Yeah. Eventually, it would, I think, fossilize itself. Like fossilize. We have glass beans, beans here. Ugh. incredible beautiful delicious awesome that's that's it for dis discord <laughs> questions uh and therefore that's it for the show thanks ladies and gentlemen thanks for stopping in let us know what you enjoyed and what you're excited for coming up as we keep going into spoiler season i can't wait for next week's episode can't wait to see what we got to talk about what else was kids gets to show off i'm excited i'm pumped Oh, yeah? Yeah. If you want to get pumped, you can uh, look at the Solid Gold sale. That's right. At CoolStuffInc.com. They got different different sales every different week, every different day. Uh, that's not true, but a lot of different days they got different sales. Right now, it's gold things. For some reason, that means uh, KC Batman from World's Finest. But it also means a lot of booster gold, gold from the Metal Men. He's in there. Got gold bug, gold balls, gold clog, golden glider. There's all kinds of gold in the oldies. Uh, tons of sales going on. Pretty decent prices on them, honestly. I thought about picking up that uh, KC Batman myself because I never collected them. And uh, he's only 25 bucks right now. But if you want to pick up some singles and sealed products, Cool Stuff Inc. is a great place to do it. And you can use code DIAL5 to save 5% off when you do so. That works on all your purchases over at Cool Stuff Inc. If you want a limited selection of items, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Uh, right now, they've got brick or treat. So when you buy a qualifying brick, you get a oops, you get a uh, free HeroClix Undead Gravity feed, which is <laughs> actually kind of cool. There's a lot of cool generics in that. So yeah, you buy a brick and you get a. 24 pack of uh the undead gravity feed qualifying bricks are disney plus war of the realms fantastic four empire there's a lot of options there they've even got the the watchman collector box set wow they still have those oh so, that's yeah. kind of fun yeah that's it's wild to me when you're checking out at shop.wizkids.com though make sure you use code dial h10 to save 10 percent off your order does not count towards Iconics pre-orders or specialty figures like Scott Porter's. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, you can get a whole free gravity feed when you buy a brick right now. So that's fun. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> not going there. That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of the case...